Amazon Darren here to give you a quick early-ish impressions look at the Zero Quadricopter. This was offered to me for a review. It is a new quadricopter on the market and I was very taken aback when I first got it. I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't seen any pre-picture uh, literature to give me an idea, but what I got in the mail looks to be a full-on competitor in the market like to DJI's Phantom series and other main quadricopters. So my first impression was I like the fit and finish, feels nice and solid. I like the lighting, I like the brushless motors, I feel nice and solid. The one main thing that I did not like was attaching the battery. This battery system, it's got a nice little lock on the side. Let's face this towards you so you can see. I'm gonna hold it correctly. So it's got a nice lock here and then it pops off but it takes a bit of force. To be fair, my DJI Phantom 3 takes a little bit of force too, but it's got a nice slot, so it's you can't mess it up. This one, there we go, now it's come off. It uses these really tiny little, little uh, slots here, and they gotta line up perfectly with that. But I'm just worried about these little notches wearing down. So what I thought was really nice when I got it, it comes completely disassembled because the gimbal comes right off. Love that. The whole thing packs down to this. Um, if you fly without the gimbal, I think they call it like sport mode. But I did notice actually when flying without the gimbal, the battery makes the center of gravity a little bit farther back. So I did notice I was making adjustments in flight to that, but the flight was still quite stable. So I love that the whole thing comes apart so you can store it in different ways. Um, I have a nice backpack for my Phantom 3 but I did wish I can get something that is a little bit more smaller. And it does take these little pins. I'll try and show you this, but it's a little finicky. There's a little notch that lines up there with this. And then you gotta just press it down gently. Locked in nice. I like this uh, satisfying click feel to know that it's in and not going anywhere. Let's pop the battery on. Hopefully it'll go on easily this time. Gotta carefully align. Okay, clicked and locked in. I'm gonna power this on, just so you can see the gimbal do its thing. All right, gimbal, do your thing. There we go. So, as you can see, it is doing its thing pretty nicely, and it does have a smooth out mode. So if you do sharp turns, it does smooth it out. So it is quite nice. I was pretty impressed with the overall performance of the gimbal thus far. Oh, if you're using the gimbal, you gotta use these legs in that mode. They look like they make it a little bit um, unstable on the ground, but thus far I haven't had an issue. But just to show you, the remote controller feels very nice. Very similar feel to the Phantom 3, just overall in the smooth roundness of it. And it's got basic buttons, uh, obviously return to home. It's got these one, two, and three. Mode one basically makes things, I would say, sluggish. It's for beginners, so it'll slow things down, limit you in different ways, and then if you want to remove limits and speed limits, then you just go one up, two to two, and then three, once you get a better feel at it. It's got really short, stubby antennas. I haven't been able to test the actual range of it yet, but it does come with the range extender, which I love that it's this quick little clip-on. I had another drone I tested out, the, the Blackbird X10, uh, which had a similar Wi-Fi unit to the older DJI Phantoms, where it was like this separate thing you had to charge and attach, which is just annoying. This, it may not be fully integrated, but at least it's as simple as click, done, awesome. Other thing which is really clever and I like, it has the holder built in right there with the little ball heads you can move it around. That's really cool. One problem with that though, it can only fit a smartphone, not gonna get a tablet onto there. So a little bit of trade-offs. And other than that, it's obviously got the clips. You can put a little lanyard around your neck. I like operating with the lanyard attachment. And a nice full, even though it's all plastic, it's got a nice metal bar here to hold from. It's got a whole bunch of lights and vibrations as well. And one of my main issues is getting compass calibration. The silly thing, I, I was able to calibrate the compass in my bedroom just to test it out, and in my backyard, which is surrounded by tons of metal and brick and crap. But when I took it to this open field, which admittedly it's in the middle of between two bridges, but it's at least a couple hundred feet away from those structures, and I could not get the darn thing to calibrate on its vertical axis. 
and some of the blinks, it, it, the app that they have currently does not have any visual reference for you. They say they're working on it, but not yet. So you're relying on the blink systems. And I was getting blinks uh, combinations that I could not find in the manual. And it would, it would calibrate fine on the horizontal axis. But once I tried to do the vertical axis, it, I, I, I'm just turning around and around like an idiot in the field and finally I just kept moving like 10 feet this way, 10 feet that way and then finally I would get the calibration. So I'm talking with them trying to figure out what's going on. I'm going to try a few different fields. Maybe that field is just particularly, uh, it doesn't like it, but it's a field that I've flown my Phantom 3 in numerous times with no issue. So I'm really hoping that they get the, uh, the app with a little more feedback to give you an idea of what's going on. So it'd be much more helpful. Other than that, the actual control of the GoPro, I can't comment on yet because I have a Hero 3 at the moment. I don't have my Hero 4 anymore. So I'm gonna try and get a hold of one of those because they say that this is designed specifically for the Hero 4 and that I might have you know, jitters in the gimbal performance, which I did, but only for sharp movements. Other than that, it was pretty darn smooth. It is flying pretty darn smoothly. I've, you know, tried the different modes of one, two, and three and letting it go right up to three. It is nice, very snappy movements. And if you want to take it easy, put it into mode one, it just slows things down for you so you can make sure you're not going to go crazy with it. And overall, just it is flying quite nicely. So that is pretty much all I can say for the moment. I'm liking what I see thus far, but I do have the, the main issues of the calibration, which I'm gonna to talk to them more about, try a few different fields just to see. Hopefully they get that app up to be able to get more use out of it. And I would hope that maybe their next iteration, or maybe they can come out with some other bracket or something to help improve the battery system. But as you can see, the gimbal floats really closely to there, so I don't imagine there's much they can do about that. It's gonna to have to be careful with the battery as is. It might not be an issue. It's just a concern that I uh, think may be an issue in the future or, and you know what's interesting? I never noticed on the bottom of the gimbal attachment, there's a little, looks like a USB kind of connection. I'll have to ask them about that too, or comb over the manual again to see if I missed anything. So for right now, that is my overall positive-ish uh, impressions of the Zero Quadrocopter. I love reviewing, and if you have a product or service you would like reviewed, get in touch and I will give it the full run-through.